Okay, so we got an orchard here that is um, a mixture of all different kinds of uh, fruit trees. So I'm going to go through, and um, we've already started to trim some of these trees out. Um, uh, we'll look at a couple that we've done already, and then the guys here have already started to do some more, but there's more that needs to be done. But the purpose of this is to go through, and I'm going to kind of give a quick tour of uh, how you... Just an overview of how you prune each tree. Uh, we got um, cher one cherry, we got one uh, hazelnut or filbert, got a bunch of apples. Uh, I think there's a, a pear or two in here. I think there's a pear somewhere we'll come across it. There's some plums. I think those are the main ones in here. And uh, so I want to, each one you prune a little bit differently. And um, uh, we'll talk about that. Now, before we do that, these are, this is uh, actually right now it's, uh, it's the 20th of. March. Okay. Things are a little bit early uh, right now. Uh, we're a little bit early as far as um, this season. We've had really warm weather and I just came out here in this field and the gnats are out. Um, when these, these are not biting gnats but they're flying around. When they hatch that's a sure sign that spring is here. They'll usually be out for about two or three days and they're just they're just a nuisance. <laughs> but I, I don't know what purpose they serve, but they just get in your face. But like I say, they don't bite. But I always know that when the gnats come out, you know, when you work outside like I have for all my life, I've been pruning fruit trees for 50 years. I started when I was a kid on the farm. And, uh, but anyway, I, I, I guess I'm kind of excited about the gnats. That means we've turned a corner. But <laughs> yeah. Meanwhile, they're kind of a pain. So these are the tools of my trade. This is what I use. I, I'm an arborist. I have a tree care company. And I started pruning fruit trees on the family farm um, uh, when I was about eight or nine years old. And uh, so it's been over 50 years. And, and as an arborist also, every year I, we prune out a number of fruit trees. Uh, some years I do a lot of fruit trees, some years I don't do very many. I think this year we've, we haven't done too many, we've maybe done a couple dozen or so. Actually, I took down a whole bunch of fruit trees just the other day. Got to try out a new chainsaw, uh, MS-481. Uh, brand new uh, still I'm a still guy everything's still and that saw was like I felt like uh, Luke Skywalker with a, <laughs> with a with a lightsaber um, the one it replaced was 26 24 years old and it finally hmm. bit the dust and this saw was like a third as light and twice as powerful I couldn't believe it anyway so but I, that, that was two days ago I, I just basically took down an orchard although we did prune out three trees she wanted to keep three an apple tree a pear tree and a plum tree Anyway, um, so everything in the past, I used to use loppers and uh, hand pruners, um, which I still use a lot for fine pruning. But the two that I did a couple days ago, I did everything with this little saw here. This is the smallest saw that still makes. I don't know what it is, about three or four hundred dollars, probably four hundred dollars. Maybe it's five hundred. I don't know. Uh, I don't pay attention. I just need the cool tools I need and. But this is a small saw they make that's gas powered and it's literally a one-handed jobber and it's got a pointy little tip on the end so you can get in there and make really good cuts. Um, I think that's the saw I used when I did those trees up there. I got a couple of these. And uh, so anyway, this is really great for tree pruning. Now it's not good, this is an apple tree here. It's not good for, for pruning the fruit wood. That you need a hand pruners. But for getting all the top growth, and this orchard here has, was let go for quite a few years. Um, this used to be an organic farm uh, run by the Dennises. You see their name still down there. I remember, I never met them, but I remember them. I've been in this town for about 35, oh, 30, this is my 36th year. Um, that's the old farmhouse up there. But uh, it, this had been let go, I'm guessing probably for at least 10 years, maybe longer. And so we're kind of whipping this orchard back into shape. So this saw is great for taking out all the, all the top leaders on the apple trees, the pear trees, and some of that. Um, you don't want to use a handsaw if you don't have to. <laughs> if you have to, you have to, but if you don't, you don't. And that's what I use. And beyond that, once I get all the, um, the thick wood out, I have all the top growth. And then, like here, this, this, is, this is an apple tree. This is really thick. Some of these branches need to come out. We'll talk about that. I use a, uh, I get in there with, a, with this saw and I cut all that stuff out. Um, so the, the, this water sprouts. People think they're suckers, but actually the ones that grow straight up, why they call them water sprouts, I heard. I don't remember why. But suckers are what comes up 
at the base of the tree, like there's a bunch of suckers growing up down there mm -hmm. uh, on the base of that. That's another apple tree. Um, and um, but water sprouts are what what go straight up off of an apple tree or any kind of a fruit tree, and then eventually you see some that are up on this tree here that are going sky high. Those all need to be cut off. Um, so anyways, chainsaw is good for that. Once I get down to um, the um, pruning of the of the fruiting wood, then this is when I I got so much stuff on my belt. There we go. I get down and I'm usually pruning like this. I often have, this is a Felco pruner. I only use Felcos. <laughs> They're the best. They're Swiss made. You can use any pruners, but these are, and I like these long handle ones because I can get more leverage. I can get really, um, with this extended handle, this is a, a newer model. Uh, you can get some leverage and cut some really big branches. It's really important to have sharp tools. So I always carry a, um, I've got a, um, I have a little, scabbard here that's got a couple sharpening things in there so I can sharpen my tools. This here is made by Corona. It's got um, it's hard, high carbon steel and I like to really put an edge on this. There you go. That feels pretty good. Huh. Do the Sharp tools are so important. It makes the job so much easier hmm. and it's a lot easier on your hands. Hmm. What's that quote? That uh, says, give me three hours to chop a tree, I'll spend two hours sharpening the axe. And That's about right. Or something. Well, I wouldn't use an axe unless you're going to cut it down, then I'd use a chainsaw. Well, it was like, yeah, <laughs> it was no, like an I, 1800s quote right, or something exactly. like that. <laughs> yeah, I have, I have axes, I, I have axes, and I sharpen my axes so I can shave with them. Yeah. <laughs> no, literally. You know, I mean, I'm not going to get a really good shave. But I sharpen my knives so I can shave with them. You yeah, know, the folks. knives I have, I can literally <laughs> shave and I can put a piece It really of looks like it's working, Nathan. <laughs> What's working? The shaving. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, I grew a beard long before it was popular. And it's just, it's a Bible thing. But anyway, uh, and then I have a, often I, when I'm pruning, these kind of things, I'll have uh, these two things in hand for the, for the bigger branches like this and then for, for doing the fruiting wood. But we'll get into that later. Um, I'm going to put this chainsaw aside because I'm not going to be using that here. So let's walk around the orchard and both of you guys, I've, I've given you some lessons on, on pruning apple trees because that's most of what we have. That orchard over there I think is all apples. Yeah. Um, I haven't walked through because they're blackberries, but now we can because you guys have done a great job of clearing it out. Um, but each tree is a little bit different. There are some basic principles that are still the same. For all fruit trees, for all pruning of anything, whether it's grapes like that or over there, or whatever. But um, and I'm making this video because I'm going to put it up on my uh, tree service blog. Or well, it'll go on my blog, but it'll also go on my on my um, YouTube channel. Yep. But I always like to weave the gospel in here a little bit. I like this orchard because this orchard, first of all. Um, <laughs> you guys have done a lot of really good work and of course a year ago or you or make last spring when we did this yeah. this place was really rough I mean it there was branches all over you guys have cleaned it out I know Josiah's done a lot of work in here and that's really cool um, it's looking a whole lot better and even even what you have done we've pruned out a couple three trees but even what you have done it's going to make a difference. You're going to improve the quality of the fruit just by cutting the top stuff out because that means the tree is going to be, instead of diverting energy, so I'm giving you, I'm giving you a whole lot of stuff here. Mm -hmm. You might want to go back and eventually watch the video. I'll put it up probably this weekend and then you can go back and review this because I'm going to give you information overload and keep the mic pretty close to me okay. so that we're not, um, you know, so it, it, we get good sound quality. Anyway. But even by cutting the, um, the top stuff off, that means the tree is going to, instead of diverting its energy into branches that aren't going to be producing fruit, it's going to be putting energy into branches that are producing fruit, like these ones down here. These are all fruiting spurs on this apple tree. Each one of these will have a bloom, and if it gets pollinated, it'll, you know, and everything, all the conditions come together, it'll have a fruit. Now I like this orchard because it's a mixture of all different things. First of all, 
it was really rough. And, and you guys remember what it was like. And as, I, as I've done in a couple of my previous talks, this is a picture of us before we come to Jesus Christ, Yeshua the Messiah, uh, the Savior of the world. Um, this is what our lives are like. I don't care how good you think your life is. And we got some great testimonies here about, how, you know, you thought your life was pretty good back then. And you, when you hit rock bottom, Anthony, <laughs> you learned it wasn't so great. You know, all the drugs and all the this and the that and everything else wasn't so cool after all. Anyway, and now you got the joy of the Lord and it just exudes out of your, you know, out of your pores. And I, I love being around people like that. It gets me going. <laughs> anyway, uh, but but this is what our lives were like. And when we recognize that we're, you know, we're unpruned, we're unshaven, we're just a mess. And when we recognize that we're a mess, the problem is we get used to living with our mess. Now, okay, now I'm going into preacher mode. I was a pastor for 18 years. I've been a preacher for 30 years. But, we, you know, when our lives are a mess, we just aren't used to it because that's all we know. And everybody else, we're hanging out with other people's lives who are a mess, right? And it's all normal to us. And we see somebody like, you know, that's lived a clean and a straight life and go like, that's no fun. You know, why would I want to be like that? I, I, you know, I, I, they're not partying, they're not getting STDs, and they're not... <laughs> You know, they're not, they're not having hangovers and they're not, you know, sleeping with all these different people and having, you know, broken hearts and emotional wreck and they don't have a broken family. They, you know, I'm like, why would I want to be like that? Well, when you come to your senses, you go like, why would I not want to be like that? You know, I don't have, anyway, I don't have all the, all the problems. Anyway, I mean, not that, look, life is a problem, but it's a lot easier when you've got a compass to follow and you got a path to follow and you got a book to follow called the book of life a bible you know you've got you've got somebody that's gone ahead of you that can lead the way called jesus christ or i like to use his hebrew name it's yeshua yeshua and in, in english it's joshua don't don't get me going on how we ended with jesus that's a, <laughs> that's through hebrew to jesus into latin and then into english i like to go straight back to the bedrock of truth and, and his name is yeshua that's what his mom mm. would have called him but anyway mm. regardless he knows who you're talking about and that's a great thing <laughs> regardless of the language he knows the language of your heart and that's what's most important but that's how our lives were like and that's why this orchard is so beautiful because like that tree let's walk up here to this tree that that um Anthony helped me prune out. Well, I think I did most of it, but this tree here, this is Anthony's tree. I sure did. And he's finally got his name on it, finally. Good, Anthony. But this tree... Oh, y'all saw a sign? Huh? You saw a sign on it? Yeah, I did. Yeah, this tree, it this is going to bear some really good fruit. This well, tree was horrendous. This tree last year when I did, oh great, you know, the wood burning thing was good. That yeah. was a great idea. Yeah, um, held out for the it good took you, Yeah, it took you a while to get up to speed, <laughs> but that's a great. Okay, let me just say something about this apple tree. This <coughs> apple tree was so thick, I literally had to cut my way into it. I could not get up into it. Mm -hmm. I mm. took off probably 75% of that tree. Oh. And it had br branches going up, probably as tall as that one mm. and more. It, see how thick that tree is? This tree was three times thicker than that. Oh, yeah. That was a good tree f representing you. <laughs> yeah, this was, tree man. is going to bear <laughs> a lot of fruit. It's just a broken branch. Mm. Just pull that off. This tree is going to bear a lot of fruit. We cut down a lot of the foliage, and we got it all in a weeping fashion. Mm which is really, really important because you want the fruit to be down where you can reach it on the apple trees, actually all the trees pretty much. And also when an apple tree, that's interesting, when an apple tree, generally speaking, apple trees primarily bear on fruit wood, the branches that are bent down. Mm. Oh boy, we could preach that one. Mm. <laughs> you know where I'm going with this? When you're tall, standing up straight and tall, the Lord can't use you. You're not going to, you know, in your own pride, in your own whatever, hubris, mm. <laughs> machismo, carnal nature. You know, I don't need the Lord. I don't need Jesus. I don't need the Bible. Yeah, well, you're a mess and you can't figure it out. Well, when we begin to humble ourselves and recognize we have a need and bend ourselves down, 
Mm. That's when we can start to bear fruit. Apple tree is a great thing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in the 12-step program, some of you maybe been through it. I don't know. I, I never have. But, but I know I've talked to people that lead it. And the hardest step number one is to admit you have a mistake. Mm -hmm. uh, admit you have a problem and you need help. And this apple tree admitted it, well, I don't know if it admitted it, but I admitted it for it. It had a problem. It wasn't bearing very good fruit. So we pruned it, and now it's going to direct all of its energy into these fruit-bearing branches, and it's going to bear big, beautiful fruit. Before, it would have been all these little tiny apples, and well, it would have been wormy and all that stuff. And it still might be wormy. That's, that's, a, that's another issue. But, but they're going to be... A, there's going to be fewer fruit, but they're going to be better quality. We like worms. Huh? We like worms. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that reminds me of the joke. What's worse than eating and uh, finding a worm in your apple? Finding half a worm. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Um, That's good. So, when, when apple trees, since we're talking about apple trees, we prune apple trees so we get, we want to thin them out so they get a lot of light and a lot of air circulation. Oh gosh, that preaches. Light is a picture of Jesus, Yeshua. He's the light of the world. You know, he said, I'm the light of the world. He's the son of righteousness, S-U-N, as it says in Malachi chapter 3. Um, you know, light is a picture or a biblical metaphor for truth. Um, and air, I mean, that's like the Ruach. That's the, the, the Panuma. That's the, the Holy Spirit. We need the Word and the Spirit. We can have the Word... But if we don't have the spirit to quicken the word of God, the Bible, the word to our hearts and our minds, we're not going anywhere. We can have the spirit, but if we don't have the truth, we're going to be just all over the place. We need both the spirit and the truth. And that's what Jesus told the woman at the well in John chapter 4, that the Father is seeking those who will worship me in spirit and in truth. And I could, I've given whole sermons on that alone, that verse, but we won't. We'll just leave it hanging out there. So anyway, that's a good example. That's a pear tree. So or, I mean, apple tree. We want to prune it. We want to get all that top stuff off. Get it so it's uh, bending down, and get it thinned out. So now we have. This is the fruiting wood here. Now you have two kinds of buds. You've got leaf buds, and but you also have. Okay, why don't you get the camera up here? I'm going to show you. Eh, let me get. Let me get an example here. Um. It hasn't started to bloom yet. It's going to be a lot easier when it starts to bloom. But you've got buds that, that will produce flowers and buds that will, will produce leaves. The buds that produce the flowers, like here's a leaf bud, but the, and they lay really flat to the surface. But the buds that, buds that produce the flowers, which then produce fruit, um, uh, stick out a little bit more. And uh, actually some of these... Actually, some of these, the, let me dissect this a little bit. I hate to do this, but I'm going to do it anyway. This is probably, uh, there might be a, a flower in there. I don't know. I don't have my glasses on. There's leaves. Mm. I, you know, they'll open, when they open up, some of these are um, leaves and uh, there might be a flower. I don't know. Anyway, you have leaf and flower buds. I'm seeing all leaf buds, but I think some of these are, are going to open up into uh I never, you know, I never pay that much attention. Anyway, <laughs> it will flower, but you have leaf and flower buds, so that's a whole other discussion. You know, you want to prune um, so that you get as many uh, flower buds as, or leaf uh, flower buds as possible, um, because that's where your fruit is going to be. Now, one thing about an apple tree is very forgiving, and you know, they just love to bear fruit, and even if you do a bad pruning job, they will still bear fruit, as long as you don't cut off all the flower buds. Anyway, uh, let's talk about, I mean, there's so much more I could say, but let's, let's move over here. These are all apple trees. Okay, let's go over and take a quick look. This is the only cherry tree on the farm. And um, this cherry tree, we really thinned it out. It's, Alan got, has got his name on it. And it's gonna produce a lot of fruit, but the fruit's gonna be way up there. Um, where you can't reach it, unfortunately, unless you're a good tree climber, and then it's out on the branches. So this is this tree's been let go. Ideally, what should happen to this tree? You, you got to be able to reach the fruit, and and you need a on cherry trees. You often need a fruit ladder 
tallest fruit ladders they make are 16 feet. I've got one on top of the truck over there. Um, and you want to get the fruit down where you can reach it. Ideally, what this tree should <laughs> happen to this tree, this tree should be basically almost cut off at the stump. Probably be, I know this is it's very good. radical, but it has been let go. It needs to be cut off all the way around here and let new shoots come up and retrain them. You can't reach that fruit. Yeah. It's pointless. It's, it's for the birds. Yeah. So, uh, you know, at some point in time. That's where that saying comes from. It's for the birds, not us. Yeah, maybe so. My mom yeah, always says know. that. Yeah. <laughs> but Did I have done this enjoy with, birds. with, with uh, big mature cherry trees like this where I literally <laughs> cut them off at the, you know, mm -hmm. right at, 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 at certain places and they just sprout up and then you have a new tree and you can keep it to, hmm. you know, 15, 10, 15, 20 feet or whatever. Okay, um, this here is a, a pear tree. And this tree needs to be cut out. Um, this tree hasn't been pruned on or so very minimally. Um, this, this whole leader needs to come out because again, the pears are clear up there and if they drop, they're gonna hit the ground and spoil. Yeah. They're gonna they're bruise. The problem with pears is they ripen from the inside out. Mm -hmm. So by the time they hit the ground, they're, they're, they're already done. You've probably learned that from last year. I was gonna say last year, the only fruit that we really didn't get a bite of We'd come out. I came out and tried to eat a pear mm. off the ground, and it looked decent. And I got halfway through, and exactly, and there was the worm. So yeah. yeah. So you just about have to pick pears before they fall. Yeah. And you can tell. Uh, okay, there's another one. Pears and apples. They're in the palm family. P O M. That's the you know that's the that's just the family they're in um, because they have seeds that are the ins on the inside. They don't have a pit. Um, you can tell a fruit when it's ripe because if you just barely twist the stem it'll pull right off this is a very interesting thing um, like an apple this is especially for apples uh, and pears because once it's hard to tell if they're ripe but if you just barely tweak them they'll they'll um, they'll they'll come loose um, that's because they uh, they as they're out in the sun and they're maturing they they the sun um, they get sugar from the sun. That's not directly through photosynthesis. The leaves produce sugars, and then that sugars go. The sugars go into the fruit. And when the fruit has been out in the sun, whether it's any kind of a fruit, when it gets to that point where it's full of sugar and it's the sweetest and the ripest, that's when it's ready to fall off, and that's when it's ready to pick. Now it's really good that you're putting uh, chips down here, and the more chips, the better. We'll get you lots of chips because. Now with the apples, it's all right to let them drop. Mm -hmm. If you have lots of wood chips that are about you know four or five inches thick, they will drop on the wood chips and they will not bruise. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to pick the apples. You can just go out and pick them up every day and that will be the maximum sweetness. They will be at their maximum sweetness. When, when, when they are ready to drop, they will be at their maximum sweetness and they will drop on the ground. And if you pick them up every day, they won't uh, hit other apples that have been laying there and bruise. So um, anyway, so this pear tree, uh, it needs some humbling. It needs to be, that whole top needs to come out because you can't reach the pears up there. And then mm -hmm. uh, again, a, with a pear tree, you want to be, you want it to be low enough where you can kind of reach it. And, uh, and pears, again, you got to, like Anthony was saying, you got to pick them uh, before they drop. Otherwise, um, they're they're going to be rotten on the inside. Mm. So you want them to be able to be reached. So I would take this whole trunk out, and then uh, all these mm. other ones, I would cut them down like this one here. I'd cut it. Gee, I'd cut this whole top thing off, and I'd let some of these new ones come out because it's, they're clear up there. You can't reach them. Mm -hmm. This here. You know what? I'm wrong. This is an apple tree. What am I thinking? It's still true though. What? I, you, pear, you, can, you prune pear trees very similar to apples, okay? I wasn't looking at this very closely. This is actually a, this has just been like, this is just a ratty old apple tree. But I'd still take this center trunk off. I didn't look at the bark very well. Hmm. There's a pear tree over there. How did the bark distinguish apple to you? Um, pear trees, well, there's an apple tree that's pretty smooth. This bark is a different kind of apple. It's a little more scaly. Um, a pear tree has, I can tell by looking at the, the fruit or by the branches, but 
yeah, this, notice on this app, this pear tree, let me double check, make sure it's, <laughs> it's not an apple. This may be an apple too, I think it is, now I get closer. Because don't we have any pears? I know there's a pear down there. These two are pears right here. I'm thinking that this one is a pear. Is because, it? Because this one's certainly a Boy, pear. Boy, you're stumping the expert now. Um. <laughs> <laughs> we'll cut it up. Yeah, this, yeah. this one certainly is a pear. Because yeah. I remember getting... Trying to yeah. get pairs off of this one and the far one right in this. You same know, these row. have been let go so long. I think you're right. Yeah, because this see this is a this is a parachute here. That's a parachute. I mm. can tell that. This, yeah, this parachute. is a pair. Parachute. parachute. Yeah, there you go. And uh, I think this is a pair. Now I'm looking at the shoots. Yeah, these are pairs. Mm. Yeah, you know, sometimes tree identification when the leaves are off is not always easy. Even experts and foresters, you know, you get out. What's the difference between a silver fir and a and a, and a subalpine fir and a, you know, some of these, it gets very tricky. Anyway, so I think this is a pair. But anyway, it, the principles are still the same. Hey, good job. How'd you, would you jump up there? <laughs> oh, hey. Just say yes. You're, you're ready for the Olympics. Yeah, what's wrong? So, <laughs> so uh, anyway, we want to get the branches so they're drooping down so we can reach them. So I just take everything down to, to whatever. I can reach, you know, and let these begin to droop down and, and, and let the, this trunk put its energy into that. But you want to get all that top stuff down and, and open them up so you get lots of air. This tree isn't real thick, so that's okay. We pruned this one out. This is Josiah's tree. Where's your name tag, Josiah? We pruned this one out. Was this the one we did for you? Or was it that one? I don't it know. was, um... Maybe it was another one. Yeah, it was one of the skinny ones um, okay. towards the middle. He's yeah. out here doing this one the other day. Okay. Though. So um, oh, here's a pear tree. Yeah, here's that, that pear one right tree. there. I know. Right? So yeah, that whole top needs to come, come out of there. See that? Right up in there. I need a pointer. But that whole top needs to come out, and we need to just get it down so that, and then some of these branches actually where, where will get. Where would you cut it? I would cut it. Here, here we go. Broken off I would cut it about, I would cut, uh, actually you could probably could cut it right up in here. Because you got some branches drooping down here. Okay. Cut out the dead wood. You always cut out dead wood. Um, it mostly looks like dead wood. Yeah, there's a lot in it. It's just dead. But I would cut off, I would leave these guys that are drooping down because you can still reach them with a ladder, but the ones that are shooting straight up, get rid of them. How do you confirm it's dead wood or not? Um, first of all, if it's brittle, brittle yeah. that's dead. Number two, you take your knife that you have. You always have a knife with you. I know it's not politically correct, but I don't care. I use a knife every day. And you... I got a couple. Is it green? Or you can take your fingernail. Oh. Is the wood underneath green? It's not a good thing to do, but see, that's, that's, that's live wood. Whereas with a dead, with a, a, a branch is dead, you scrape it, it's, it's just, there's no green in there. And also, dead wood is always going to be crackly. Often the bark will be crack, crack, flaking off, and it'll be brittle. So it, that's, you know, that's the easiest way. Just do this fingernail scrape test, or the, um, or the um, you know, if you have a pocket knife or something, or you use your pruners and just scrape a little bit of bark off. Um, so, okay, this tree, this orchard, let me just peg this base. This orchard has a lot of different kind of fruit trees. Uh, as I started to say a couple times before, I like this orchard because each person is an individual. You know, we are all made in the image of God, the Bible says, and yet each person is a unique individual. Each person is beautiful. That's because God or Elohim, again, I like to use the Hebrew, the biblical Hebrew names, he is so multifaceted. He can be whatever he wants to be to whoever he needs to be without changing his values, his standards, his word, his laws, his commandments, his character. And we are all different individuals. Some of us, all you know, different skin colors. We come from different ethnic backgrounds, different um, cultural backgrounds, different body shapes and sizes, there's male and female, different colors of hair, you know, all this stuff. And yet, we can still be a reflection of Him, and we can still be unique individuals at the same time, and adhere to His Word, and that's what brings us together 
is the commonality as being made in his image and then having his word, his standards, his ethos, his character in our, in our being. And that's the ultimate, that is the ultimate uh, unification of, of the human race without losing individuality and the beauty of diversity. To be lined up with the Bible and yet be, you know, I've traveled to a number of countries, I know you've traveled, and you see different people in different countries with different, the way they dress, their music, their dance, you know, as long as it's godly, you know, it's not carnal and demonic and that kind of thing, it is beautiful. I love mm -hmm. the cultures, you know, um, it's just, it's just fantastic, um, again, as long as it's, it's biblically oriented. Uh, and there's room for a lot of people. You know, Israel had 12 tribes in it. 12 tribes of Israel. The Jews were one tribe. And there was Ephraim and Manasseh and Benjamin and, and uh, Naphtali and Asher. And, you know, there were Simeon, Shimon. There were all different tribes. And each one was a little different. Mm. And they were beautiful. But they, all, they were all the 12 stones in the breastplate of the of the high priest, the Kohen Haggadol, in the, t in the tabernacle of Moses. So they were all, each was a beautiful stone. Mm. And the New Jerusalem is made up of uh, many different stones in it. I've got some of the stones in my necklace that the New Jerusalem is made out of. Uh, I'm going to eventually have, hopefully, maybe a necklace that has all the stones. But I've got a few of them. This is jasper, the, this, um, and, uh, and this is gold, and I've got some other things too. But... Um, the, the 12 gates in the New Jerusalem are named after the 12 tribes of Israel. And each gate is a pearl. Now, this is amazing. Uh, guys, there's no Gentile gate. There's no Gentile gate. Okay, I know I'm getting down a rabbit hole. The church says it. there's Jews and Gentiles. Uh-uh, that's a, that's, that's, that's a heresy. Hmm. When you come to Jesus, Yeshua, you are now grafted in to the olive tree of Israel. You are now become a child of Abraham, you are now one of the 12 tribes. Even if you, you know, who knows what our bio, what biolog, bio, biological descendancy is? We don't know. I mean, it's been thousands of years, you know. Well, I don't know if I literally descended biologically from one of the 12 tribes. I might, may have, I may have, but it doesn't matter. Paul said in Ephesians chapter 2 that, that when you come to Yeshua, you are now part of Israel. You are part of the nation of Israel, and it's the one new man. And in Galatians chapter 6, Paul calls it the Israel of God. This isn't a replacement theology. This is simply stating the truth. You now be, you're grafted in, just like Ruth or like um, um, uh, Rahab or, 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 or Joseph's children. Joseph's wife was an Egyptian, and they were half Egyptian. They were grafted in. And so you're going to be going through one of those 12 gates. So these, hmm. all these fruit trees all are a picture of the diversity within the kingdom. And I'm not talking about moral diversity. I'm not talking about diversity of, of, of well, I'm a this, and you know, I'm a homosexual, and I'm a pervert, and I'm a Satanist, I'm a, I'm a Buddhist. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about diversity within the context of the Bible. Okay? And there's a lot of room for, for expression and diversity. It's beautiful. Yeah. Okay, let's get back to the fruit trees. Well, that, is, that does relate. Like these here, here's another apple tree. These will need to be cut off. And I know you didn't cut them off because you don't want to crash that little shack over there. It probably <laughs> wouldn't take much to crash it. That's sturdy. Um, okay, let's, let's, let's go into some of the plums. <laughs> we talked about the cherry trees <laughs> and the apple trees and the pear trees. We got some plums. Oh, there's a hazelnut in here. Where, where Where's the that? hazelnut in here? There's a, I don't know which one that is. It, it's, um, come on, I know it's here. I saw it the other day. Um, let's forget about hazelnuts. Uh, there are... There are Basically, with hazelnuts, you just want to thin them out, and 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 uh, and and the fruit drops, the nuts drop. You just want to thin them out um, so that they're not overly thin, but just so they're so the fruit can develop. Basically, and they, look, we want to get air and light to the flowers. We want the bees to be able to get in there, and we want the fruit to be able to develop without it, like on the apples and the pears. If you got 
too many buds all together, guess what you're going to have? A bunch of fruit trees all competing for this, or a bunch of apples or pears all competing next to each other, and they're going to be squeezed up against each other, and they're going to be misshapen and, and scabby and that kind of thing. What's that? Like these plums, these plums yeah. get crazy and they battle for yeah. who gets the sunlight. Didn't you build a treehouse up there last? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, we just set a blanket up on the top. Yeah, and I saw that. Enough. So this plum tree here, we got a couple. There's a there's there's a plum. These are these are all three plum trees here. These this plum tree. Look at all the look how these branches are all crisscrossing. This tree needs to get saved. This tree is a mess. This tree doesn't know which way it's going. It's like every which way, and a lot of people are like that. A lot of people don't know if they're coming or going. They're, they're, they, they've lost their direction in life, and they've got, you know, one minute their emotions are taking them this way. One minute uh, some philosophy's taking them that way. One minute they're into this religion, and they're into this woman, and they're that guy, and they're this fantasy, and this thing. It's like, man, get your life together. Figure out who you are. This tree needs to be thinned out. It needs to, it needs to get saved. So look at all the crisscrossing branches. Look at this branch. Okay, another thing. Most, all trees have a shape to them. Or we want them to have a shape. Okay, apple trees, if you let them grow, they'll grow up like that, and they'll, they, you can't even reach the fruit. So we want them to grow like an umbrella, so we can reach the fruit, and that's why we prune them like that. Um, plum trees, um, you want to be able to reach the fruit, and right now this is kind of high, so I would, I would want to get the tree down to probably about 15 feet or so, so you can get it with a ladder, and cut, here's a dead one, see you'll get, you can tell it's dead, there's nothing on it, that needs to be cut off, but look at these branches, look at the shape of the tree, and then just kind of look back and say, which way does this tree want to grow? and start removing branches that go in the opposite direction of the way the tree wants to grow. For example, look at this branch here. That branch starts here and it goes clear over there and it makes a 90 degree turn and it heads over this way and it goes up there. <laughs> it's looking for the light. Okay, that'll preach, guys. You know where I'm going with this one. A lot of people are wandering around in the darkness and they don't know where the light is and they're looking here for the light they're looking here for the light and they're looking here for the light this is why trees are such a good analogy for people this branch starts here it should have followed this example of this branch and it's reaching out but it goes like well i'm going up here and this branch went the right direction this guy went took the left turn in life and that went that way and he and then he he couldn't find the light over there so he went up there and he went finally he found the light and guess what? He, he got to the light, but now his life is a mess. He's all crooked. What is that a picture of? It's a picture of this. A lot of people are searching for the light. They're searching for the sunlight. S-O-N, mm -hmm. light. And they got to go here. And they got to experiment with this sin. And then they got to experiment with that sin. And then they got to go try that religion. And then they got to go try, get this philosophy and they gotta go over here and meanwhile they get to be 30 or 40 years old or whatever and they got a they got a baby with this gal and they got a kid with that one and a kid with that one and they're paying child support and they're they they're you know they've done drugs and all that and they're 30 years old and they look like they're 50. I mean it goes on you see them yeah. you know you see these people walking on the streets of some of the cities where we live and it's sad and they're living in a mess. And when they finally, you know, a lot of them have lost their teeth and they're a mess. And they don't, you know, they're driving an old car and they're, and they're, and, and it's, it's, you know, they're on welfare. And they're just, it's so sad. Where if they would have started young and gone in their straight and narrow path, <clears throat> like some of these branches, they need to be thinned out, but they're reaching for the sun and they're going in the right direction. Okay. So we're not going to belabor that. So part. these ones find somebody to help guide them. They need guidance. Yeah. And there again, and that's what t transitional youth is so good about. Mm. And and there's other uh, programs too that are really great. But to give some beautiful guidance to beautiful young people so that they don't go through and make all these mistakes. Look at this branch. This branch needs to come off. Look at this. Look at this funky. <laughs> thing. Yeah, that is amazing. You know. So what can you, you do? Look at this branch. You remember it starts all this? over here. 
he goes up here, he goes up there, then he, he makes a U-turn or a, a 90 degree and he hits, finally he hits the light, but he's going in the wrong direction. So on the plum trees, you want to thin them out. So A, you get light in there. You got to, they got to have the light of day. If you don't, if you don't have light, guess what? You're not going to get fruit and flowers. Um, and also, if you don't want the branches to be so heavy with fruit that they start to break, and plum trees do break, yeah. they can break very well. Yeah, now, split up the here's a plum tree. I think Josiah, you pretty much pruned this one out yourself, didn't you? This tree looks really good. This is the way the tree should look. Now this looks like it's got two kinds of plums on it. This is a. This one hasn't come yet. This one's coming up out of the. Um, this is a grafted tree. This is like a. Uh, yeah. A, a golden plum and then a purple plum because I know that this one's a golden plum. That's interesting because this is this is coming up out of the base and there was a graft onto a rootstock and these are two different kind of plum trees. Wow. This guy's got gender dysphoria. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> we won't get into that one. Hurt. <laughs> yeah. No, actually, it's just a, yeah. Anyway, so this one will, yeah, this, this, but this is how the tree should look. Uh, I'd probably want to get the height down a little bit, but this is actually not bad. This is, and here's another plum tree here. That, yeah, this that, guy's this branch is going to be Yeah, this tree looks really good. Down, this is a plum tree. And I'd also get some of those top branches down a little bit because this is up there a little bit too high. Okay. You say 15 feet, roughly? You know, whatever you can reach. Sure. Either you can you climb it, or if you got a ladder. Most ladders are, you know, they make fruit ladders. Those are the three-legged ladders. They're great because um, they work on uneven ground. Uh, you don't want a four-legged ladder when you're trying to uh, pick fruit. But they're, they, the, the fruit ladders come in eight, six foot, eight foot, 10 foot, 12 foot, and 16 foot. And I use, in my uh, tree service, I'm using, I'm on ladders all the time. Uh, pruning trees, pruning shrubs. Um, and I've, I've got three on top of the truck there. But 16 is the tallest they make. So really, you don't want anything much taller than that. It's too hard to pick. Um, unless you got mechanical advantage, like a cherry picker or a, a man lifter or something like that. And so the lower the better. Okay. All right? Okay. Does anybody have any questions? We've kind of gone through this orchard. I mean, I could. Yeah. There's so much we could talk about, but that's a quick overview. Yeah, if they're if they're long. Why don't you get the camera over here yeah, so we can yeah. hear? Yeah. If they're long, but they're curved and they're stretching out quite a bit, like in the other trees in their area, do we want to cut those? Yeah, we don't want the tree. We want there to be. We don't want the trees growing into each other. This orchard is. I wouldn't want to, this orchard. They're, they're kind of planted close to each other. Uh, and there, it's not bad if you maintain them. They're on about, look like about 12 foot centers or something. 10 or 12 foot centers. I, I'd say about 12. Um, so these were designed to be more uh, semi-dwarf trees. If they're large trees, depending on, okay, depending on the size of the tree um, and how big it will get its mature size, that, is, that, will, that will determine how far you plant them apart from mm. each other. See, that plum tree should have been planted further away. Huh. It, it, it's been let go. Yeah. But, you know, it is what it is, so it can be beat back into shape. Yeah, we'll do most of our fruit picking up through the top, go climb to the top of it. And last season, there was all kinds of big, beautiful fruit up at the top, but then around the bottom, because it's not getting any light. Yeah, exactly. There you go. There you go. And, you know, see, the trees are, are what we call phototropic. They reach for the light. They are designed that because that's where they get their energy. That's where they get, they need sunlight. The leaves need sunlight to produce uh, so they can photosynthate. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's, that's what feeds the yeah. tree. Uh, the, the, um, the sunlight comes in. It, act, it, it basically is a kind of a form of type of hydrolysis. I think that's the term where, where there's a chemical reaction where um, the sunlight comes in and it, and it, it a activates the, uh, the hydrogen. Uh, molecule, the carbon dioxide, and then there's um, mixes with the water and the the, the, um, um, the the CO carbon dioxide. One of the oxygens pulls off, and then you got water, and it uses the oxygen for its what's called respiration, which produces food. It's in each leaf. There is like about ten, uh, I don't know, six or eight levels. This leaf is very, very 
thin, it's very small leaf, they're just starting to leaf out. But in there, there's like about six different levels. And at each level, there is all kinds of very, very complex um, chemical reactions that take place that produce eventually produce sugars carbo and carbohydrates and and plant food it is absolutely as i've studied the biology and i i can't even explain it i'm it, you know it's beyond my ability to comprehend but uh to th say that this all evolved everything has just got to be perfectly i mean all the cells all of the all the chemical reactions everything all the the, the chemistry's in there. Everything's got it all the, at the atomic level. Everything's got to line up just right, and everything acts and reacts with everything else. And I'm reading a college textbook right now by, uh, it's probably one of the best ones out there. It's like about that thick. It's on um, basic plant um, um, biology, um, botany huh. and biology. And the guy... I mean, this thing's like 800 pages long, and he goes through all this stuff. It's an awesome book. It's half of it's over my head, um, but because I never studied biology in high school or college, I should have, but I didn't. I was a liberal arts person. Anyway, I wasn't going to go into this business, but I did anyway. Um, and uh, so I'm learning, but you know, he's an evolutionist, and I'm like, dude, this is so amazingly complex. This could not have evolved. If one thing was off, none of these trees would even be able to produce food, be able to do it. It's so much easier to just believe in intelligent design in a creator than to believe that, you know, it all just happened by chance. You just threw, you know, a, a trillion hmm. uh, atoms out there and they all just assembled themselves and came up with this. And a tree is really simple and is, is really um, um, elementary compared to an eye or a brain. Mm. <laughs> I mean, really. <laughs> so anyway, I just stand in awe as mm. I study these things. Amen. Um, I got a question. Yeah. Um, some of the, I don't know if this is just going to take time to flower or not, but some of them are very clearly flowering and some of them are very clearly not. The, yeah, the shoots. That's because, that's the difference. That, yeah, oh, this is, so, okay, okay, let's talk about grafting a little bit. This plum was grafted. I, um, this this is the original rootstock, and then when this when this rootstock was just a little twig or a little tiny, just a little tiny sapling, they took a what's called a slip of another tree, and they grafted it into the rootstock, and this is something that's been going on you know, probably for thousands of years. And I have never done any grafting, but I work on trees that have been grafted. So what they do is they'll take a stronger rootstock. So this, this tree here that this comes up off of had a stronger, a healthy, more vibrant rootstock. This tree didn't have a very good rootstock, but it had a better quality fruit up above. So they grafted this into the healthy rootstock. Huh. And this part of the tree comes from that. That's the part that doesn't have the um, the, le the leaves aren't out and the flowers aren't out yet. Whereas this is called a sport. This is coming up from the original rootstock. This is not intended to be. This is a, was a, a sucker that came up and let go, which is cool because it's got a different kind of fruit on it. But normally they, this would have been cut off and only this would have been left. Now, on the old, on one of the trees that my grandfather planted the tree that I started working on when I was about eight or nine years old on the family farm uh, that my grandfather planted it had three like three different kinds of apples on it mm. because they had grafted different types mm. of uh, apples into this Gravenstein apple wow. tree so on uh, one tree three different kinds of apples yes exactly wow, cool yeah so you can do that with like <laughs> uh, trees of like kind mm. hmm. you can't do that with a well nectarines and, and tan, um, they have several, you know, like where they, uh, peaches, mm. you can do with similar type um, fruit, fruit, like a, um, pear, a, a pear and an apple, uh, it's, it's a, um, it's a Japanese have done that, it's called a, uh, I don't know, it's called, oh yeah, I thought that, I forget yeah. what it's called, it's like a Japanese pear, exactly, yeah, they call it. yeah. totally, like a, I think that's a yeah, cross, more crisp, like, yeah, exactly, yeah. the same thing with, huh. um, 
Um, I think a nectarine. Mm. I mean, so there's a cross between like a plum and a peach, huh. uh, because they're in the same family. They both have pits. They're they're called a um, uh, whatever the name of that family is. I can't remember the name. Huh. You know, pears and apples are in the same family. Uh, peaches and 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 plums are in the same family, and 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 cherries are also like cousins of that because they got a pit. So um, anyway. Huh. I, that's not my area of expertise. I just kind of know a little bit about it. Though. All right, that's kind of the quick overview. We can probably turn the camera off now. Um, I get Do you want any last off. words? Huh? Any last words? Um, yeah, you bet. So before we turn the camera off, it'd be fun to come back here when the fruit trees are blooming, mm -hmm. and the, or when they're blooming, but also when they're bearing fruit, because that's. Really, these, these trees were pretty radically let go. They were neglected, which is a picture of our lives. Sometimes we, we grow up in situations where we've been neglected, either because of our family situations, because of you know maybe no fault of our own, um, or because we made wrong choices in life, or whatever the case may be, just because of life circumstances, because of where we were born and raised. And the beautiful thing is these trees when we, when we looked at them a year ago, they looked like just a mess, almost irredeemable. Mm. And yet, with God, all things are possible. Mm. Um, these trees are going to start bearing fruit. Because of what? Because there were people that loved them. Because there were people that cared. Because people cared about these trees, just like Jesus cared about you and me enough to come in and say, Hey, if you'll let me, I'll clean up your life. So you can bear fruit. You can be a productive. You can leave the world a better place. You can be salt and light. You can actually be not part of the problem of humanity, but part of the solution. Amen? Amen. I mean, that's what this is all about. And in the Bible, he likens in several places you know, human beings to trees. Mm -hmm. There's a number of um, Hebraisms there. Mm -hmm. um, and he... Uh, you know, he said, I am the vine, you are the branches, John 15. When we're plugged into him, and he's the source of light. In John, uh, Psalm, a uh, source of light and life and, and, and everything. In Psalm chapter 1, about the tree planted by the river of water. It, 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 you know, its leaf does not wither because it's planted by the river of life. There's so many beautiful metaphors in the Bible. And he will bear his fruit in his season because his roots are being anchored into the rock, which is a picture of Yeshua, Jesus. And they're by the water, by the river, where they can, where they can suck up water and, and get that nutrients. And water in the Bible is a picture of the Holy Spirit. It's also a picture of, 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 of the Word of God, the Word of the, the Bible. Uh, I mean, you know, the, 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 um, um, the truth um, from Genesis to Revelation. So, uh, yeah, this is what he wants to do with our lives. But the problem is, we are our own worst enemy. Our own stubbornness, our own pride, our own laziness, our own um, just, we love our sin and we don't realize how much of a mess we really are. Until so one day we wake up at the bottom and a lot of people climb the, go to the top to reach the bottom. So this is the, but this is the hope. He's taken the foolish things of the world, you and you and me and everybody, and he's gonna use them to confound the wise and bring glory to his name, just like these trees. Amen? Amen.